You're listening to Love Talk Live with the relationship expert, Jamie Bronstein, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to Love Talk Live. I'm your host, Jamie Bronstein, and today I have with me Abby Rosenblum. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk about relationships and all of it. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited to have you here today. Um, Abby is a matchmaker, and I was on your podcast, and so now you are on mine, and I just can't wait to get into all of these wonderful inspirational topics and um, talk all about matchmaking, etc. So, and I will read to you guys all about Abby in a second. But I just thought it was such a Midwestern accent, Abby. <laughs> hey, we'll let it slide this time. It's okay. <laughs> I've lived all over New York, LA, Chicago, but that Chicago <laughs> accent is still there. Anyhow, so welcome to the show, everybody. And today, the show is being brought to you by a company called Granny Says. And Granny Says is an organization company. They sell these beautiful baskets. I personally have become a lot more organized since using them. They are an amazing company and you can find these products on Amazon just by typing in Granny Says. Um, and their Instagram is granny.says.home. And what I love especially about them is their motto, which is a happy life starts from an organized home. Granny Says is a home product brand specializing in making storage bins, hanging organizers, and wicker baskets. Granny says, make room for love. So, and what I have to say is that, here are the products again. What I have to say is that when we don't have clutter in our lives, we have more room for everything, especially love. So I'm a huge fan of Granny Says. Thank you so much for, for Granny Says for coming into my life and helping me make more room for love. And I have become more organized, like I said. Abby, are you an organized person? You know, it's funny you say that because I have always been loving organizing. I'm one of those Ooh. nerds who like watches the home edit, loves to put stuff, you know, color coat the bookshelf, you name it. <laughs> I love it. So you should definitely check out Granny Says products. I guess so. I will. Okay. So thank you, Granny Says. So now, Abby, here is all about, I'm going to say Abby. <laughs> so here it is. Abby Rosenblum is the founder and head matchmaker of The Social, Modern Matchmaking, the premier matchmaking service for Colorado singles. She works with people who are relationship-minded, growth-oriented, and just too busy to be spending hours on end swiping and looking for their person. Her passion is for connection, and her mission is to spread more love into the world. She's a fifth-generation Coloradan, avid skier, loves to cook, and just got married last year. So... Congratulations on getting married. That is so exciting. I feel like that adds a little bit of credibility to the matchmaker job, you know, the fact that I was able to find someone for myself. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, can we just start there? Can we hear totally. about your your journey to love? And then we'll talk about how you help people with their journey to love. Yeah, I'd be happy to share. So um, yeah, I got married last year and, you know, my husband and I, we met three years before that on a dating app. This was before I started the business. I guess it was more than three years ago. So it was more like five years ago because I started the business four years ago, um, really born out of my frustrations with online dating. Of course, it turned out okay for me. I found someone great. But through that saga of going on 75 dates in a six-month period, I had a lot of fun. I honestly had no intention of finding someone serious. I was just there to meet people. Um, you know, I learned, wow, this could be really hard for someone who really wants to meet someone and really wants to put them out. So after I myself made, you know, every mistake in the book, I was like, okay, why don't I try to help others, teach them what I have learned and help them out so they can really find their person in an easier way through actually meeting in person and not as much swiping. So well, one thing that you were saying that's, that I find so interesting is that you weren't necessarily looking for something serious. Yeah. And did you, did you say to yourself you wanted to go on 75 dates in six months or did it just happen to be? It yeah. just kind of happened. I had um, moved from Las Vegas to Denver and I thought I just got out of a long-term relationship and I just wanted to meet new people. 
So I just had fun. I'm a total extrovert. I wanted to go out, meet new people, have dinner, have drinks, see what there was out there. Um, so, you know, obviously now I try to teach people it's a little easier if you have an intention behind dating rather than it could just be to have fun and just to meet people. Um, but now I specialize in people where their intention is to meet someone for a committed long-term relationship. What I find so interesting is is this concept of, you know, I work with lots of singles and, yeah. and it's like this very fine line of setting the intention and knowing exactly what you're looking for and visualizing it and believing it, but then also not having any type of desperation energy. Because right. if you're, when you have that energy, if you want it so badly, it actually brings it's this fear energy and the universe gives you that, you know, like you're, you're so fearful right. it's not going to happen that the universe makes it not happen. So it's like this fine line. So I love hearing that you, you weren't even really looking for it, but you kind of were. <laughs> I was so definitely happened. open to it. You know, it's like, Hey, if it happens, it happens. And sometimes that can be a really fun place for me to work mm -hmm. with someone where it's like, Hey, you know, I'm open to a long-term relationship. But like you said, I'm not putting that pressure on myself that I have to get married by the end of the year and then have kids in two years because that's just so hard. You know, everyone's journey is different. So you got to just start from there that it's going to happen differently for you. Yes. And just trust the process and don't have a timeline. <laughs> Right. Because that timeline probably won't play out how you thought it would. Never does. You plan and God laughs. Could, I mean, it's <laughs> literally true. Right. Like, yeah, it's the same as like the only constant is change. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like I think having an open mind is really so key to relationships, dating, life, all of it. Absolutely. Yeah. We just we need to trust that it's going to work out and do as much as we can or this leads me to my first question for you. People, you know, you do as much as you can on your own. And then sometimes you just need some help and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, like I like right. to, it's good to cover all your bases. So can you take us through the process of what it looks like someone reaches out to you and then where do you go from there? Yeah. So uh, someone reaches out to me, maybe I find them, you never know how it happens. Um, it really does sometimes happen pretty old school where it's like a friend of a friend or my rabbi or someone's, you know, priest or whatever it is, you know, send someone my way. And it all starts with an interview. So I take an hour, hour and a half to really get to know someone, you know, everything from how old they are, their family history, their relationship history, to their lifestyle, what they're looking for, their value system, their passions. You know, we go through everything. Um, and then, you know, we kind of determine, do we want to work together? Because I think there's a lot also to be said of finding a matchmaker that feels like a good fit for you. Because um, we're all different. And there's so many of us all over the world. So there's no, you know, we could have more. There's too many single people. We can't help them all. So, you know, really getting to know someone is the first thing. And then we do some coaching. We get them ready to go on dates. We might do some styling. They might get a haircut. They might get a makeup lesson. You know, anything that helps people feel super confident. And then we set up the dates. So we say, hey, you have a date with mystery man on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. at this restaurant. Um, and it's all blind. So you go, you show up. Oh my God. You meet a new person. And then we follow up after and get all the feedback and make sure you're on the same page after the date. Yeah. In this day and age, there's no blind, like there's no blind Never. dating anymore. Yeah. <laughs> You you um you, you either see them on the app or if it's a fix up you you like stalk them Google them the second you hear, <laughs> you hear their name so so your clients really have to have a lot of trust in you right and you know it doesn't really work if they don't trust me because imagine you know not trusting me and then going on these dates all those dates are gonna be terrible because you're already going in being like oh Abby's got another doozy for me or you know any number of things you might be thinking. So, you know, really working with a matchmaker, the biggest thing is, you know, having that trusting relationship, which I think sometimes takes some time to build because, mm -hmm. you know, even working with a coach, a matchmaker, a therapist, you know, anyone that you're sharing so much of your life with, you know, probably a red flag if you trust a stranger right off the bat. 
<laughs> right. And you've never read their testimonials or known anybody <laughs> who's worked with them. You definitely, when you're, when you're investing in your life, in your love life, you really want to work with somebody who you can trust. Right. Cause it's such a personal thing. And, you know, I think there is definitely a stigma of, okay, is it, now time for me to reach out to a matchmaker. Um, and people worry, like, does that mean I don't know what I'm doing? Does that mean I'm not dateable? Does that mean I'm clueless? Uh, but I would say it really means you're really with it because you're saying, wait a minute, I can have someone else help me be even more successful in dating. And I always say, this is more like when my clients are a little hesitant to do the apps, but I always say, you never want to look back and feel like you didn't do everything that you could. You didn't cover all the bases. And so, and I know that one of the things that you wanted to talk about is this, that yeah. why not, you know, go on the apps, get a matchmaker, do it up, go to events. So tell us more about like why it's really important. Um, if you're, if you feel like, obviously like you break up and then like, you don't get a matchmaker right away, but like maybe you've been on the journey yeah. for a little time. Like when is, when is the time do you think? Right. Um, you know, it's different for everyone. Kind of like we were saying, like your journey is different. Um, you know, some people come to me and they've never been on a dating app. Some people come to me, they've never even been on a date or in a relationship. Some people come to me and, you know, they've been married for 20 years and now they're just like, help me. I do not want to step foot online. So, you know, it's really in all different phases of life. So, you know, really the person who hires a matchmaker is someone who, you know, probably is super busy. That's a big theme. Mm. You know, they're also very growth oriented. This is probably also people that work with you as well, I would think. Yeah. Um, you know, because you're going to get feedback about dates, some that you might really like, some that might be harder to take of, you know, hey, you did X, Y, Z, and it really turned this person off. Um, but so valuable to be able to know that and realize, oh, like now I know this and I don't have to do it on every date again. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Went on a little tangent. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I think it's great to get the extra information also. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So basically just it's, you'll know when it's time or if you, if you are feeling like you want to, then there's a reason why you're feeling that way. Right. And even if, you know, it's even someone who's like, Hey, I feel ready to put myself out there and you don't know where to start. I would suggest reaching out to a matchmaker in your area. Um, maybe put yourself, all of us matchmakers have databases. Some are free, some are paid. I would put yourself in all those matchmakers databases because then you can be one of those options to potentially go on dates. You don't necessarily have to hire one, but okay. kind of like what I was, we were talking about, um, you know, using everything at your fingertips. So, you know, use a matchmaker, go on a dating app, Go to meetups with people who have interests that are similar to yours, as long as you don't get burnt out doing all those things. <laughs> yes. And so I'm writing a book, which I, I think I told you about, um, oh, yeah. about manifesting <laughs> love. And one of the things that I talk about in the book, which is this, is that like for me, when I was on my dating journey, I mean, I was, I did not go on 75 dates in six months, but maybe I did. I didn't count. I don't know. But <laughs> went on lots of dates and I, I just was always feeling like I had to say yes to everything, like to every event, every fix up, every, everything I was on. It was before apps, but it was, I met my husband on match.com, like the website. And it was, it wasn't a good feeling that, um, I was so worried. Like if I don't go to this event, like what if, what if my man is there and I, and I, and I missed the opportunity. So that's why just relaxing into trusting that you're going to meet your person regardless and cause, and that's like, that's also the work that I do with my clients to teach them that, right? that, that it's kind of like, um, no matter what path you go on or where you go, you will meet your, your soulmate. It's true. And it's like having that faith can be so hard, you know, because you get discouraged or, you know, maybe you go on two dates and neither goes on to a second date. And that feels like just the worst rejection. But, mm. you know, if you take it from a 6,000 foot view, you know, those two dates are nothing in the grand scheme of things. So, you know, it's like people put so much clout sometimes on like the number of dates. Or I'll get a lot of people that are very analytically minded and they'll say, okay, well, I think it'll take, you know, six to 10 dates for me oh. to find my person. And I'm like, okay, if you're counting, one. this no. is not going to work. 
Oh God. Yeah. Like, and you seem so laid back. So you need your clients to be go with the flowy. Right. And I mean, it is, you know, natural for people to get stressed or emotional, you know, every emotion comes up when you're dating because there's a lot. It's like putting yourself out there in such a vulnerable way. You know, it's different than if you're having a work interview, you know, you still can kind of have some walls up on your personal life. But in order to date and get to know someone, you have to really open up, which really not a lot of people are comfortable with. So that's why we would be a good team because right? I can work with them on just loving who they are and looking at dating. I'm guessing that you do this also. I do this with my clients. Looking at dating as fun. You know, when you're yeah, feeling yeah. good about yourself, you just kind of want to go and and meet these people because there's not the fear. I mean, of course, sometimes people have the fear. Well, is he going to like me? You know, because that's you're human. But mm-hmm. not like this stifling fear that keeps you stuck and that you don't sleep the night before, things like that. Just if you can look at it as lighthearted and fun, then it will you'll usually yield a better outcome. Right. And it's like even if you think about like the days where you just feel so you feel great or happy, you know, good things just happen to you usually mm-hmm. on those days. Like, you know, even this morning I woke up, I was like, I'm weird. I love Mondays. And I woke oh. up and I was like, it's a Monday. It's so great. I just got back from vacation. And I was like, oh, I just hit every green light, you know, going down the street. <laughs> so it's just like, you know, thinking of when you put that good energy out there, you know, good stuff is going to come to you. Maybe it's not dating related. You know, maybe someone's not going to deliver a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever you want to call them to your doorstep. You're going to have to put some effort in. But even if you have that good energy when you just go out to get your coffee, like imagine striking yeah. up a conversation with a total stranger. You never yeah. know where it might lead. Yes. And this is, this is absolutely, this is the work that I do. This is manifesting. Yeah. It's that our outside experience is a reflection of our inner reality. And so if we walk around feeling good, vibing high, having high vibrations, our, our energy is up, then we naturally, the universe will bring us opportunities and people that mirror what's going on inside of us. So it makes sense. I mean, it makes so much sense and it is the truth of life. So we it has to start from within. It just always does. Right. And I mean, you definitely, everyone's going to have bad days. Like, I don't think we're saying, oh my God, you have to always be this like bright, sunshiny person. But, you know, I'm curious what you would think, you know, if you're having a bad day, I always tell like someone, do not go on a date. Like take that time for yourself. You know, even if you had a date schedule, just reschedule it. They'll understand. Yeah, I would say depending on the severity of the bad day. I mean, of the bad day. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, like if there was a death in your family, like something horrible. Um, oh, but if it was like, the day. yes. Yes. Like you were not in a place to be present and and, and be you. Um, but I would say, like, I don't know if it's something small, you kind of fight with a friend or like maybe something happened at work. It actually, I think, could um, be helpful. But that's if you're into the date and you won't know that unless you try. Right. However, it's kind of like if you don't want, if you're like in a bad mood, you don't want to go to a party or an event and then you go and you're really happy you went. Sometimes it's really good to have the distractions, I think. Totally. Yeah. So I think I I agree with that. The severity of the bad day. (laughs) Yeah, right. Grade it on a one to 10 scale, figure out where it is in there and then decide. Um, And one other thing I wanted to throw out there too of, you know, how dating can feel so daunting. Like you feel like Mm -hmm. you have to go on this many dates to find this person or one out of every three dates goes on to a second date. You know, people track all this stuff and it drives me nuts. Um, But kind of thinking about, you know, every week doing one thing to further your dating journey. So whether that is like writing in your journal, what you're looking for or going on a date or messaging one person on Bumble, creating a profile, reaching out to a matchmaker any of those things could count. I like it. It's all about taking action. Right. Because you can't really meet someone if you're just sitting at home and not putting in the work. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, you need to, yeah, you want to show, you want to show up. You want to show the universe. You want to just show yourself that you are invested in this. 
It's kind of like I encourage my clients to pay for the dating apps. You know, don't just do the free version because it's showing that you're that you care, that you're invested. Right. Okay. So um we have about 12 minutes left, 11 minutes. Um, anyhow. This is I, right. Oh my God. Oh, I know. We could <laughs> talk about this forever, obviously. And this is my show, your show. Like, this is why we do what we do. Our right. work. Um can you tell us like one or two success stories? Obviously no names, but can you tell us about someone who came in, this is their story, and then they ended up, you helped them find their person? Yeah. Um, so I will start with, uh, we'll just call her mystery woman number one. Okay. Jeanette. <laughs> yeah. Or I guess I probably could use names because I've they've been on my podcast. So actually it's okay. not even a big deal. Yeah. Okay. So Molly and Kevin, they are together now. I think they actually just moved in together. Um, and have their own place together. Um, Molly reached out to me like peak pandemic. It was probably like January, 2021. She was not in the best place. She was like, oh, I really want to meet someone. She was feeling like with the pandemic, it was really stressing her out. She really hadn't gone and done a lot um, because she wasn't sure about going out and meeting people. Um, So we did only virtual dates for like three months. Okay. And a couple things, you know, went on to multiple dates, but it was hard because, you know, she didn't feel comfortable totally meeting people in person at the time. So we took like a six month pause, which I do with people, Mm -hmm. you know, if they're feeling like "Eh, this just isn't working and, you know, it's really hard with virtual dates to like form that connection because physically you're not there together. You don't really know about that part of the connection. Oh my God. And it's so important. (laughs) Exactly. So yeah, I'm very grateful. We don't have to do virtual dates only anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she took a break um, and then we reconnected. Yeah. Like six months later and she was in a much better place. She was feeling confident about going out, actually meet people in person. Um, and I ended up setting her up on one date. Meh, not a match, but interesting. And then she went on another date with Kevin, who she's with now. And they had a great first date. It, there weren't any, you know, it wasn't fireworks. They didn't know right off the bat, mm-hmm. but they knew on that first date, they were interested in each other mm-hmm. and they wanted to get to know each other more. And it was just about maybe two weeks ago that it was their one year anniversary since their first date. And they went back to the restaurant I sent them to, which is so oh cute. Oh my God. Yeah. So you picked the restaurant. I didn't know if the guy yeah. did. So yeah, I picked the place. It's funny because they make fun of me because they didn't really like the restaurant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, we went back even though we didn't really love it. And I'm like, guys, that means it doesn't little. matter. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Now, Kevin, how did mm-hmm. you how, how did you find him? Was he was in your database? Did he reach out to you? How'd you find him? Yeah. So a friend of mine referred him to me. Um, and he was in my database. So, you know, hey, it pays to be in the matchmaking database because you never know who might come up and who you might meet, Um, you know, and they are both, you know, never married, no kids and just wanted to meet someone great and it just worked out really well. And they even lived, it was almost long distance. They lived like 45 minutes to an hour away from one another, which is funny that I say that in LA, maybe not the same. Um, And now they're in the same place together. So. And do you, you mentioned different matchmakers, different cities. Typically do matchmakers only work with clients around, like around you? Like you work with clients in your region? Usually people specify in a certain city, but there are some that work all over. They might pick a few major cities. Okay. Um, And, you know, if you are listening to this and you're curious about finding a matchmaker in your city, please reach out to me because we have a actually nonprofit group called the Matchmakers Alliance that uh, we all join and everyone is vetted for best practices and all of that. So I can always refer you to a matchmaker friend of mine in your city. And please tell everybody your region. Oh, yep. So I am in Denver and I work with singles all over Colorado. Um, But I will say most of our people are in Denver and Boulder. Um, And yeah, if you are in the area, please reach out. Um, We also do help people with their dating apps. So we can also work nationwide or worldwide. So if you do want support in the dating app world, um, I have a course that just came out on mindful swiping. 
So, you know, hopefully making sure you don't get burnt out when you're swiping. Like yes, it can be mindful. I promise. No, that's so great. I love it. Um, okay. So a few more minutes. Do you, do you think we have time for like one more little story? Oh yeah. I can, I have a, another great story. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So Karen and Scott are another really fun success story. Um, so Scott reached out to me uh, for matchmaking and I worked to get work with people in a six month period. So we started working together. I was setting him up on a bunch of dates. He's a very charismatic guy. You know, he was getting along with so many people, but no one had clicked just yet. So I had this crazy idea. Uh, my background is actually in TV and production. So um, I had this crazy idea to do a live TV show and Scott volunteered to be my bachelor on the show. Oh my God, I love so this. I totally used the... Um, the dating game format. So Bachelor, three women that I handpicked for him, but he can't see them. They're behind a curtain. Oh and he's God. asking questions about all of them. So um, rewind a little bit. I actually had a different Bachelor that I'd cast for the show, picked out three women specifically for him, and he gets into a relationship two weeks before we were supposed to do the live stream. Okay. So Scott, I'm like, he's down for anything. So I'm like, okay, will you be my bachelor? It'll be fun. I promise I won't embarrass you. Your family can watch. It'll be fun. So he says, yeah, I'm down. I have to recast all three women because it's now a different guy. And I want to make sure that they fit what he's looking for. So, you know, I'm going through and I have two really awesome women and I need a third. And a good friend of mine, I was like, oh, they could be a good fit, but also, you know, sh maybe she'll just do me a favor because I need a third person yeah. to come on. So she's like, oh, fine, I'll do it. She was kind of seeing someone at the time, but not exclusively. So she's like, I'll do it. Fine. I'm like, thank you. You're saving my life. So of course, throughout the show, you know, he's asking questions and, you know, it's pretty obvious he's going to choose my friend, Karen. Oh my and, God. you know, she was like, I twisted her arm to come and do this. So he ends up picking her and then they meet and she's like not into it. <laughs> okay. She's like, do I really have to go on a date with him? And I'm like, yes, go on a date. It's part of the whole thing. We'll follow up and it'll be fun. Even if you guys aren't a match, just go on the date. So of course they go on the date. They have an amazing time. They're there for far too long. Shut the restaurant down. And they literally spent every day together since then. And that was a few years ago. <laughs> Wait, you caught out. It was how many years ago? Two years ago. Oh and they God. got married last September. That is so wonderful. Yeah. Oh my God. Such an interesting story. I know. I it love it. And it was it was there. all on video? On yeah, so it was all on video. So if you want to watch, you could go yeah. back and watch the live stream. It's on our YouTube channel. Um, if you just go to Plug the away. Social, the social Modern Matchmaking on YouTube. Uh, you can see the whole episode. You can watch it unfold. Social Modern Matchmaking on YouTube. What is your Instagram? What is your website? How can people find you? Yeah, so you can follow me. I am Modern Yenta, Y-E-N-T-A. Uh, Yenta is a Yiddish word for matchmaker, gossip, busybody, you know. So uh, can't believe I got that handle, but I do. So that's me. Mm -hmm. And you can follow the business at The Social MM, as in Modern Matchmaking. You can go to our website, which is modernmatchmaking.club. A little different, but we're like an exclusive club. Also, modernmatchmaking.com was like $5,000. Who's paying okay. that for a URL? Not necessary. <laughs> okay. Um, and you can also listen to the Ghosted Podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. Um, and you can listen to Jamie and I's episode, uh, which came out two weeks ago now. Yes. It was very recent. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for all the plugs. Um, I'm going to plug Granny Says one more time. Granny Says by these baskets. Granny.says.home is their Instagram and they are on Amazon. Get organized. Get rid of the clutter. Bring more room for love. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This was so much fun. And I'm definitely going to watch that t the TV show video thing. Oh yeah, I'll send it to you. One I'm I, sure we'll link it somewhere too. I love that that concept. And anybody, everybody reach out to Abby. She's amazing. So thank you, thank you for joining us. Um, everybody, as always, you can find me at therelationshipexpert.com and join us every week. Love Talk Live on LA Talk Radio at 
2 p.m. Pacific on Mondays. Thank you. Everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you. You're listening to Love Talk Live with the relationship expert, Jamie Bronstein, only on LA Talk Radio.